Hey fish friends, Zenzo with Tazawa Tanks, back with another video. So today I have a short clip that's just uh, sharing a little problem that I had in one of my tanks, actually this one here. And uh, I had a little case of cyanobacteria, um, which is also called blue-green algae, although it's not an algae, but it's called blue-green algae or BGA. And um, so I'm going to share with you just uh, a, a DIY um, hack that I um, found to uh, actually I just kind of did a little research and figured out how to do it myself and uh, it works so I thought I'd share it with you. So uh, go ahead and take a look and hopefully you enjoy. So here I am at my uh, 60 gallon Tanganyikan tank which is uh, Neolaprologus multifasciatus and Cyprochromus leptosoma. So um, I have a little spot in here and I'll zoom in right there. I don't know if you can see that kind of green area on the background. That is not algae, that is cyanobacteria, sometimes called blue-green algae or BGA, but it is not an algae, it's actually a bacteria. It's very distinct um, because it has a very bright greenish, sometimes greenish blue color, hence the name, and also has a very strong and distinct smell. So it's very easy to determine um, if something is normal algae or BGA. And uh, you know, sometimes you'll get it like in dead spots. Um, this tank is pretty well filtered and well, very well filtered and, and uh, I have a lot of circulation in here with power heads and air stones and things like that. But there is this one little spot where I do get some um, BGA coming. So I'm gonna show you a quick little hack on how to get rid of it. So I am going to use a, a household product that everybody has um, and that's hydrogen peroxide. And then um, here I'm just using um, some cotton pads or swabs. You can use cotton balls or anything like that. These are like those cotton makeup pads. I got, got these out of my wife's uh, makeup uh, counter. Um, so anyway, uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna apply some hydrogen peroxide to the pads and I'm going to uh, gently wipe off the, uh, the cyanobacteria um, with that hydrogen peroxide and um, then it will take it away and it won't come back in that spot and it won't come back for quite a while. Um, one thing to know about hydrogen peroxide is that in small doses, it is fish tank safe. So um, as you know, water is H2O, and if you don't know, hydrogen is H2O2, and hyd or hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. Hydrogen peroxide actually um, will turn into water um, either with some, with some type of catalyst that you can add, or if you simply leave the cap open or if you pour it in a bowl over a period of time, it will actually um, uh, become a, uh, be it'll become water. So um, in small doses, it is fish safe and, and uh, plant safe. Um, I have seen people apply hydrogen peroxide directly to their, um, into their tank to squirt on plants. I'm gonna pause here so I can fix my pump. All right, got that fixed. So, um, you know, I have seen um, Aquarius actually take hydrogen peroxide like in a little, um, uh, like a little small uh, uh, squeezing applicator and squeeze it right onto the leaves of plants to get to have them to get like a reddish color and things like that. So in small doses it is fish tank safe. So there you can get a close-up view of the uh, Santa bacteria. You can see it's bright green. Um, if I were to touch it and smell it, it would uh, have a very strong odor. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off. All right, it's quite loud because of the water coming out of the pump here, but um, I'm, I've got uh, my uh, cotton pad and it is uh, soaked in hydrogen peroxide. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, dab and gently kind of wipe this off. Hopefully you'll be able to see, my hand is in the way, I apologize. You can see it coming off there. I smell it, it smells terrible. Um, has a very strange odor. I, I don't know. It almost smells like rotten spinach So if you've ever had like a bag of spinach from the grocery store and uh, Maybe you forgot it was in there and it was in the back and uh, You take it out and it's kind of you know turned turned uh, kind of slimy 
and um, if you smelled that bag, it smells terrible. And that's kind of what this smells like. All right, I've got another, uh, got another cotton pad and soak this one as well. And just kind of gently uh, wiping it off. The reason I'm being gentle is just because of my 3D background. Um, but if you had a different service, a surface, excuse me, that uh, wasn't as delicate, then you could obviously apply more force. Okay, so that's it. So um, I removed all of the cyanobacteria. Um, and uh, because I used peroxide, it's uh, killed it in that area. And uh, it will not come back anytime soon. Um, so I know that that spot, if it is a dead spot, will be BGA free for quite a while. Okay, so I'm all done. The tank is filled back up. Um, and uh, I just did a quick little feeding so you can see all my multis in there. Um, tons of fry. I've got uh, a bunch of adults, juveniles, etc. You can see the Cyprochromus. You can see the male there with the blue and the yellow. Um, that's the dominant male. There are two other males in here and five females. Um, the other males aren't as colored brightly as he is. So um, they just have a little bit of blue, but he's definitely the dominant one. Um, so anyway, uh, you can see I'll zoom back in there that uh, that was the area where the BGA was. Um, so no more cyanobacteria there. I'm so happy to report that this tank is uh, relatively cyanobacteria free. You know, it is a bacteria, so, you know, it, it may end up on other surfaces, etc. A um, couple things about uh, cyanobacteria. Uh, one of the reasons why it is hard to get rid of is that it is a bacteria, not an algae. So um, it can spread uh, typically easier and harder to get rid of. Um, most animals will not eat it. So um, most of your, um, you know, your cleanup crew, your algae eaters do not touch cyanobacteria. So like, you know, most of the snails won't touch it. Um, you know, you're not going to have Placostomus eat it and any of your algae eaters. They pretty much all avoid it and leave it alone. Um, I have seen sometimes some of like the pond snails, those small um, pest snails that you get sometimes. And actually I have a few in here. Um, those little tiny snails that come in from plants and things like that. Uh, I don't know where they are now, but there's, there's some in here. So sometimes I've seen them um, actually work on it and... Um, so, you know, that's cool, I guess. But uh, for the most part, you're not going to have anything in your tank that's going to get rid of it. So you have to, have to do it either, you know, manually or by um, using some type of medication like erythromycin, as an example, which would be a way of getting a large outbreak of cyanobacteria out of your tank. Um, the other thing I'll, I'll um, note is that because it is a bacteria, you want to make sure that you clean everything and that you don't contaminate your other tanks. So for example, um, I stuck my pump in there to do a water change. I will sterilize that pump before I use it in my other tank. So I'll run it through. Um, what I do is I use um, hot water and vinegar, distilled vinegar, but you can also use like a mild um, uh, uh, chloride bleach solution, chlorine bleach solution. You just have to make sure that you um, you remove all of the uh, bleach prior to using it again because you don't want to uh, add that back in your tank. Um, and uh, you know, also make sure that you wash your hands very thoroughly. One, because if you get it on your hands, it stinks, it smells terrible, doesn't come off very easily. Um, you will smell it on surfaces of things that you uh, scrape it off with, such as scrubbers, etc. So you want to make sure that all of those items are cleaned very thoroughly before you touch and introduce it to other tanks. Okay, so I hope you liked my, uh, my short little clip. I apologize if it was uh, a little shaky and I know the water was a little bit loud when I was uh, uh, filming in the tank. But um, anyway, it's just a real simple way of dealing with cyanobacteria. And uh, it's not a fun thing to have in your tank. It's very common and um, it, it's, it spreads very easily. So chances are if you have had a tank for a long time or if you have multiple tanks, you've dealt with it before. 
So this is just a kind of a simple way of getting rid of it if you only have a small amount and hopefully above the water level. Um, anyway, before I close out, I uh, j just came home from a business trip uh, just about half an hour ago. And um, of course, <clears throat> every time I get a shipment, I, I want to share it with you. So I was excited to see a box uh, waiting for me on my doorstep. Or not in my door on my doorstep, but inside the house. My wife, my wife brought it in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And uh, if you recall, um, uh, a video that I posted uh, maybe a week or two ago. I don't remember. I post so many videos. But I posted a video about a week ago talking about why you should support your local fish store um, and uh, how you can support your, lo your local fish store um, by purchasing online. And uh, so anyway, I just uh, got my uh, stuff in that I ordered. And if you recall, I, um, because of my fish service business, uh, my tank service business, um, I use equipment quite a bit more than your, you know, more than the average hobbyist. Um, unless you've got a, you know, huge fish room and, and you've got multiple tanks and you're doing probably as many water changes as I am. Um, but it's very important to have good working equipment and one of those pieces um, was the uh, Aquion um, water changer kit. And uh, if you recall in the video, it <clears throat> broke a couple of times on me. I got replacement parts, fixed it, broke again, it broke again, fixed it again. Finally, I just said, I'm done with it and uh, got tired of fixing it. So I turned it into a siphon and saved the tubing, obviously. But I got my Python. So um, this is the uh, 25 foot um, variant. Um, and that's just the length of the vinyl tubing. I already have like 50 extra feet of vinyl tubing from uh, from the other one, from the Aquion. So I can, now I've got 75 feet worth of tubing if I need it. Um, and some of my jobs I do actually is quite a bit of waste from certain water sources. So um, anyway, just thought I'd share since I just got it in the mail or got it uh, delivered um, probably today, I'm guessing. And uh, I ordered this through Aquarium Co-op, which is not my local fish store but they are a local fish store. They're great for the hobby. Corey is very knowledgeable and shares a lot of information, helps a lot of people. So I just wanted to give a little back. And um, since I was buying one and uh, needed to get one inexpensively, I ordered it um, through Amazon, but he gets credit for it. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, please give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't like it, thumbs down. That's cool too. Um, at least I know that, you know, hey, this video sucks. But uh, anyway, um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Please comment. I love reading your comments. I try to reply to everybody. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.